Hello and welcome to this tutorial. We're going to talk about how a router boots up. So if you've ever turned on the power switch on a router, or if you've issued the reload command at the command prompt, you've initiated a router boot up. And so the router goes through a boot sequence once you do that. And you may have wondered, well, what exactly happens between the moment you do that and a router comes back online as a fully functioning router? Well, we're going to go ahead and take a look at all the different steps that the router goes through in order to come back online, in order to become a fully functioning router. Now, this may seem like it's something you don't have to pay attention to, that it's a lot of, you know, behind the scenes information. Well, in actuality, you do need to know this because routers don't always boot up properly. And when they don't, you've got to know where in the boot sequence the router's failing so that you can go ahead and troubleshoot it. Okay, so this is actually really useful knowledge. Knowing where the problems lie in the boot sequence can be all the difference between a very small outage and a very large outage. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. And let's look at step one. The first thing a router will do when it's booting up is known as the POST. POST stands for Power On Self Test. Now, if this sounds familiar, that's because you might have heard that when, it, when you've talked about PCs. PCs actually do a POST as well. Basically, the POST goes ahead and it checks that all the different hardware parts of the router are functioning properly. And that makes sense because if your hardware isn't working, none of the software that runs in the hardware is going to work either. So the very first thing is the POST. Make sure the hardware runs properly. And the POST itself is an actual program, and it's located in the ROM memory. That stands for read-only memory. So it's a really small program. It gets loaded right away, and it's responsible for checking out the hardware. Now, if this particular part of the boot sequence fails, well, that means you have a hardware problem, and either you have to contact Cisco or whoever you bought the hardware from, because you're probably not going to move much further past this step. The router's not going to function properly. All right, that's step one, the post. Let's go ahead and take a look at step two. So step number two is the bootstrap step. And so it may seem like after the hardware is okay, you can just go ahead and load up the iOS and the router is going to start running. But really, that's not the case. The bootstrap step is another step. It's a small little program. And this is loaded from the ROM, just like the post was. And it's loaded into RAM, the random access memory. And then this little program is run. So just like the post, this is another little program. And the purpose of the bootstrap is to load the more complex iOS. It kind of helps the router get to that point. So we're taking little incremental steps here. First, check out the hardware, and then load up the little tiny program, which is the bootstrap. And the bootstrap is going to help us then load up the larger, more complex iOS. OK, so that's step number two, the bootstrap. It's just a small program, primary purpose, help the router get the larger, more complex iOS loaded and running on the router. All right. Now we're at step three, and this is where the iOS actually gets loaded on the, on the router. So our hardware is okay, the bootstrap is loaded, and part of its job is getting the iOS loaded. And so which iOS file gets loaded is actually up to you. In the configuration file, you can actually state which iOS to load. Now that can be a locally stored iOS in the flash memory on the router, or it can be an iOS that's stored on a TFTP server somewhere else in the network. That's up for you to decide as well. Now the iOS image is actually a compressed file. So the first thing that happens is it gets copied, that file gets copied into the random ac access memory, the RAM, and then it gets uncompressed. And then the router is actually able to run the iOS. Now one problem you can run into this step is that you don't actually have an iOS. Maybe you thought there was one, but you didn't actually put it on the router, or perhaps the router's trying to reach a TFTP server and it just can't reach it. There's a, there's a network problem somewhere else. So if you don't have an iOS to actually load, you're going to get stuck at this particular point. Okay, so we're at step four now, and guess what? This is the last step. There are a total of four steps in the boot sequence, so this is it. 
So here, the iOS looks for a configuration file. And that file is always the startup config file. And this is where you have all the configurations of the router, which tells it how you want it to run. So obviously, a problem that you can run into at this step is that there's no startup config file. That may be OK if this is a new device or if you deleted it on purpose. However, if you were not expecting it, then you've got a problem. Uh, you've lost your startup config file. Um, you need to look further into this matter to find out what happened to that file. Now, if there is no startup config file, then you're automatically thrown into setup mode. And if you haven't yet checked it out, check out the tutorial on the router setup mode. Okay, so this is the fourth and final part of the boot sequence. After this, the router is up and functioning, the hardware works, the iOS is loaded, and the router actually now knows how it is supposed to behave. All right, well, to summarize the boot sequence, the router first starts off making sure its hardware is functioning properly. Then it goes ahead and uses the tiny bootstrap program to initiate loading the larger iOS. Then the actual full iOS is loaded. And finally, the iOS looks for a startup config to tell it how to behave. And then you have a fully functioning router. All right, so that's it. That is the boot sequence of a router. Thanks for watching.